is neither regarding to your assignment or nor related to anything other than that. Huh? Then fine. So uh, earlier, what we are uh, discussing was what we call is the uh, real GDP and the nominal GDP. real GDP and nominal GDP. And in that context, we come across the uh, concept of what you call a GDP deflator, which is nothing but the ratio of your nominal GDP to your uh, real GDP. And that GDP deflator uh, in a way, uh, measure how the general price level in the country has been increasing. And uh, this is what we call as inflation. That is, uh, it means the continuous increase in the general price level. So your GDP deflator also capture inflation in a country. Today we will discuss more about uh, this uh, inflation. Usually inflation is discussed under <coughs> uh, three broad uh, headings. The first one is what is the meaning and how we measure inflation? Uh, the second one is different prices in indices used uh, in India uh, and their measurement as well. And then the third one is inflation across countries. What we will do is we will restrict our uh, discussion to the first two that is meaning and measurement of inflation and then we will discuss uh, in general inflation in India. We will not uh, discuss much about inflation in uh, other countries. So what do we mean by this inflation? Inflation means a continuous increase in general price level a continuous increase in general price level. This general price level also known as your macro price level. Uh, therefore, if the general price is say 100, Uh, in say uh, uh, 2015 and then it becomes 110 in, in 2016, then we'll say there is 10% uh, inflation between 2015 and 16. And say in 2017, so you have 2015, the general price was 100 and in 2016 it become uh, let's say uh, uh, 110 then we will say uh, the inflation is 10 percent between 2015-16 if in 2017 the general price level remain say 110 then we will say there is no inflation uh, in 2017. Uh, before going further, so what we are saying is general price level. So before going further, let's look at what we mean by price and then what we mean by this general price. So uh, let us uh, look at what we mean by this general price and uh, 
first let's look at what is price implies then let's uh, look at what we mean by uh, general price price implies uh, or uh, what we mean by price is it is the exchange value it is the exchange value of a unit of commodity or service expressed in terms of money so excess value of unit of commodity uh, or services that expressed in expressed in terms of money so that is what we call is the uh, 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 price for instance if if, if, a, if a car uh, is a, a 10 lakhs uh, the price of a car is say 10 lakhs then a, uh, you can purchase that car uh, by paying uh, that 10 lakh similarly <coughs> in other cases if a pen, uh, pencil price is uh, say uh, 5 rupees then you can pay 5 rupees and get the uh, 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 pencil and so forth uh, this price also uh, known in other forms other forms in the sense it is sometimes referred to tariff or it sometimes refer to sales or this is sometimes refer to fair for example in uh, some cases like the electricity or the telephone or in the hotel accommodations the price is of, often referred as tariff like in other cases for the purchase of irrigation water from say government agency uh, the price is referred as sales similarly use of house the price is called rent and the uh, payment of transfer payment the price for the transfer payment Uh, or sorry uh, transportation services is co is called as uh, your fare uh, in the say uh, in essence all these terminology that ta tariff says fare and prices uh, are synonymous <coughs> the major difference in this uh, terminology is that uh while p is often independent of the amount of use the other uh, uh, uh have a fixed utilization similarly like p is the uh, price of your say tuition fee is price of your education but in that case uh, what you see is uh, Uh, the amount you can use uh, and the fee there is not certain uh, limited limited uh, amount you can use when you are uh, giving a fee sort of thing that is uh, but in other cases uh, you have some fixed amount like in the case of uh, price of pain or like fare uh, uh, there is a fixed uh, distance you can uh, travel Uh, by uh, giving a uh, some amount of fare and so forth so the price 
uh, which is the exchange value should be distinguished from what we call as the uh, uh, use value of commodities. So there is a concept of exchange value and the exchange value of per unit of uh, goods and services expressed in terms of uh, money is called prices and to that we have the other concept is use value. The use value refers to the utility or the satisfaction the consumer derives by using any commodity he or she has. So uh, the exchange value and uh, to illustrate the difference between that exchange value and your use value, you think of water. Uh, say if you are not thirsty, then the use value of water is very limited. That is the satisfaction. But if you are in say a, 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 in a desert of Rajasthan or maybe where water is very uh, uh, limitedly available, then and you are thirsty, then in that sense the use value of water is very high. The use value of the water is very high. But, but the exchange value probably remain uh, same. In that effect, uh, Adam Smith had given a classic example to illustrate the difference between exchange value and use value, which is known as your water diamond paradox. Uh, so, in that water diamond paradox, water is highly useful to humankind, but it has a very small exchange rate. In fact, uh, in many parts of India, particularly in rural India, you will see the exchange value of water is almost zero. In contrast, diamond, which is of little use uh, uh, to us, uh, except uh, probably uh, of beautifications, but diamonds commands a very high excess value, but it has very little huge uh, value. So uh, uh, you see that is why it is known as your water diamond paradox. So the, in, in other words, what you are trying to say, your use value and exchange value may not go in the same direction. Uh, the use value of any commodity depends on the person it is using. So it varies from person to persons. Also it varies from place to places and it varies from time to time as well. The use uh, use value uh, uh, varies so much, but the excess value varies, does not vary to that extent. For instance, the, if you are uh, purchasing a, a, a pencil, then the excess value is 5 rupees. It is same for you as well as for me. It's very, very little, uh, but 
the usefulness of, as I said, or you are purchasing a water bottle, the exchange value is say 15 rupees per liter to you, similarly for me as well. But if you are thirsty, then uh, the use value of water bottle for you will be very high, but for me, it may not be. So that is what we, we call as price as the exchange value and it is different from the uh, 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 what you call is the use value. Now let us look at uh, what we mean by this general price level. To illustrate the general price level, let me give you an example to illustrate the so let me give you an example to illustrate what you call is the uh, general price level so as you know, know for uh, each goods and commodity uh, goods and services that are exchanged they have their individual prices so these individual prices also known as your uh, micro prices of individual uh, uh, good and uh, services the general price level is uh, a weighted average of these individual goods and services in the consideration. For example, let's see there are three goods. One is your rice. The other one is, let's say, is a salt. And the third is a house for which we pay rent. And the uh, corresponding prices of rice is say, 30 rupees per kg and for the sat it is let's say 400 rupees for piece and for the house let's say 2000 rupees for the month as the rent. Then you can uh, calculate the uh, so these are the individual prices. Now we can calculate the average prices, uh, let's say P bar, as the average prices is become say 810. So this average prices of 810 can be considered as your, uh, what you call is uh, the general prices or macro prices macro prices. Here what we have done is we have given equal weights to rice, sat and house when we are calculated these average prices of P, P bar. But we can as we said we rather than giving say one third weights to each one of the commodity we may give different weights. Let's say if you give weights of uh, 0 0.6 uh, to uh, rice and say 0 0.3 to sets and say 0 0.1 to your uh, house, then you can calculate the uh, weighted price in day, weighted price. Weighted uh, uh, Average prices as uh, uh, 0 0.6 into 30 plus 0 0.3 into 400 plus 0 0.1 into 200, and then you get something around 338 as the average prices. So, this whether this 338, 338, or 810 as your general price level. So that is what is your general or uh, uh, macro price level. So in general, we can see, say the, gen, uh, 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 the general price level at time period T, if you denote it as uh, PT, 
is equal to sum of i is equal to 1 to n when there are n number of commodities or goods and services in the country wi pit pit so this pit is the The PIT, so here this is your, uh, 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 what you call is the general price level, PT is your general price level, and WI is the weight given to the individual uh, commodities, or you can say weight given to the IF commodity. There are n number of uh, uh, commodities uh, in the economy and PIT is the price of ith commodity at time period T. So that gives you what you call is the uh, 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 general price level. Now note that uh, if your uh, weighted price is uh, 338, uh, there is nothing particularly which you could buy by that uh, price level of 338 rupees. Uh, therefore, the general price level is merely a concept and we will not able to buy, may not buy anything uh, uh, using uh, that general price level because that general price level may not be equal to uh, the price level of any individual commodity as in this example. So, uh, as you see the general price level here we calculated if, if you are giving say a, a one third weight to each of each each items then you get a general price level of 810 and if you are giving different uh, weights then you are getting a different uh, price level uh, uh, general price level so as we see as we give different weights to these uh, uh, individual items we can generate different general price level. So the point is which weight one should use? It is worth mentioning is weights for individual goods should be positive. At least they should be non-negative. They should be greater than uh, WI should be greater than or equal to zero and your sum of wi will be equal to one. So, uh, <coughs> as we give different weights, then we'll uh, uh, generate uh, what you call is uh, different uh, general price level. We, uh, uh, once you have this, so we'll discuss this weight and uh, when we'll discuss different price indices uh, as we'll go along. So once you have this general price uh, level of all goods, then uh, there is not such uh, thing as all goods. Uh, therefore, uh, there is nothing that could be purchased uh, at that general uh, price level. So, uh, once you have this general uh, price level, uh, we can compute the inflation rate, uh, uh, which may be a better approach through a price index. So, once you have, say, PT as the uh, general price level for the time period T and say P0 
is the general price level for a, a base period then we can calculate the price index uh, at time period t is equal to pt upon p0 that is the co current general prices uh, uh, to a base general uh, 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 prices for instance uh, uh, if the uh, pri general price level is say 120 in uh, 2020 and it becomes say 200 in 2021, then the uh, 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 general uh, uh, the price index in 2021 is 200 upon 120 which is uh, uh, will be something around 1.66 something six something like that so uh, uh, what it implies is there is uh, a price increase by uh, almost 67 percent the price is increased by uh, 67 percent uh, so as we see our uh, so So what we are doing was uh, we, we get the uh, price index as the uh, general price level in time period T upon the base your time period. When we have individual uh, uh, say uh, prices that is PIT, then we can calculate the price index at time period T as the weightage average of the PIT upon PI0. So this uh, I is equal to 1 to A. That's what I'm not writing. Uh, you can write that. So uh, for individual prices, we can uh, generate the price index is like this. But as I mentioned, that then we'll get different price indices when we'll use different WI. As, as we had discussed earlier, when you are using the equal weights in the example of the uh, I, I had provided earlier for the rice, shirts, and house. In that case, when you are pro uh, providing equal weights of one third, you got a price in uh, uh, general price index of 810. But you, when you are uh, giving weights of 0.6 to rice and 0.3 to uh, uh, start and say 0.1 to your house, then you are getting a price index of 338. So what we observe is uh, as we give different weights, then we can get different price indices. Now, uh, what weight we should provide? What weight we should provide? Uh, uh, one way of providing this weight W is we can provide the weight equal to uh, the value share value share of this ith commodity or services in the base year, in the base year. 
so what do you mean by this value share of uh, uh, ith commodity in the base here this is equal to uh, your what is the value of the ith commodity in the uh, base here this is nothing but the quantity times the uh, prices so that is the prices at the uh, ith commodity in the base year is we are denoting at pi 0 into the quantity of that ith commodity in the base year qi 0 uh, uh, so qi stands for your quantity p for your prices and then value share uh, uh, this is value share of uh, uh, ith commodity to get the value share you divide it by the total uh, value and total for total value you just sum it for all commodity so i is equal to 1 to n your pi 0 qi 0 so that gives you uh, the value share so that gives you the wi that is the value share of the ith commodity uh, in the uh, base here now if you replace this wi uh, in uh, in your price index your price index now will be uh, now your price index at time period t is uh, equal to sum of this is your w i into p i t upon p i 0 so here you see uh, the uh, p i 0 and this p i 0 cancel out so what remain with us is sum of p i t into q i 0 divided by sum of p i 0 into q i 0 so uh, uh, this become your uh, price index so your price index become sum of p i t into q i 0 divided by sum of p i 0 into qi 0 so what you see here is this is the price ratio okay and the other part is you are uh, multiplying it with what you call is the base your quantity so qi 0 and qi 0 okay so this price index uh, when we are pro, uh, uh, providing weights like this is known as your last pairs price index so this known as your last pair price index and we write it as p i in bracket l l for the uh, uh, last piece and for the time period t you have a solve so the uh, let me uh, remove this then i write it again
so uh, now uh, your last year price index which we are writing as p i t l is equal to sum of p i t q i 0 upon sum of p i 0 q i 0. So this is your last pair price index where weightage are the value share of the commodity in the base year. Any question? Tarun Majati, are you there? Tarun. Suresh Mina. Siddharth Gandhi. Are you there? Siddharth. Siddharth Gandhi. Hello, right. sir. I'm an audible. Sir, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sleeping or what? Sir, there is a issue with the microphone. No, now, now you are audible loud and clear. Okay, tell me what we are discuss. T t tell me what we, we have been discussing today. Siddharth. Uh, 
yes about inflation but in inflation what we had discussed just uh, brief us ओके सिद्धार्थ ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट इट कॉल इज द लास्ट फियर्स प्राइस इंडेक्स हियर इफ यू इंस्टेड ऑफ यूजिंग दिस बेस योर क्वांटिटी If you replace it to it, what you call is the current year quantities. Then what we get is what we call is a past sales price index. And the past sales price index, as we can write. P I T price index at time period T. In bracket P for the passes is equal to sum of P I T into Q I T. Now we are replacing the base year quantity by your current year quantity. P I zero Q I T. So as you see, the difference between these uh, 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 two indicates that uh, in the last year price index we are using the base year quantity, whereas in the past year price index we are using the current year uh, uh, quantities. uh since the quantities of uh, various goods and services uh, varies over time therefore the two methods uh, will result in uh, different uh, level of price indices uh the last year price index is more popular but as you see the process price index is more uh, 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 more in line with our gdp deflator the gdp deflator which we had discussed which is your uh, uh, nominal gdp upon your real gdp you see your process price index is more uh, uh is in line with the gdp deflator or, or gdp deflator use this passes formula uh, uh, sort of thing uh the last pair price index measures the change in cost of a fixed basket of goods because the goods are fixed at the quantity are fixed at uh, fixed uh, the uh, at the uh, base period therefore it the it assume what you call is no substitution substitution so the last year price index because it's based on the fixed basket of goods from a base year therefore 
it assumes no substitutions uh, thereby it usually overestimate the estimate the true index similarly the passes index use the current quantities of goods thereby it assign fixed weight to each commodity uh, uh, and it overstate the or overestimate the substitution effect overestimate the substitution effect substitution effect thereby uh, underestimate the true Uh, true indices. So, therefore, we have an additional index, or we have another index, which is known as your uh, Fisher's index. Fisher's index. Which is uh, equal to your the geometric mean of your last pair price index and your uh, uh, past year price index. So uh, your Fisher price index because your uh, last pair price index, uh, uh, as we see. Overestimate your true index, whereas your uh, past year price index underestimate your true index because of the uh, overestimation of the substitution factor. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, we have uh, what you call is uh, uh, new in new index, which is known as your Fisher's index. And uh, this Fisher's index uh, is nothing but the geometric mean of these last pairs and price, uh, last pairs and past years price index. Now you can measure the inflation by uh, rate of, uh, yeah, uh, rate of change in this general price level. Uh, so uh, once you calculate the price index, you can calculate what you call is the uh, uh, general price index. Then uh, say general price index at time period T is P I T, and then you, you have general price index in time period P uh, T minus one, and then you can get the growth rate of this general price level, this will your uh, price index uh, at time period T is growth rate. So let's denote it just uh, PI hat. Then this uh, price index PI T hat will measure your uh, 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 in inflation. If we want to compound uh, compounding the uh, growth rate of this uh, price index, then you can do your uh, compounded uh, price index growth rate as uh, P I T upon P I uh, T minus one uh, log of this into 100. So that gives you the compo compounded uh, or continuous basis change in prices. Uh, and uh, you, you know, if you want to get the uh, continuous compound annual growth rate, 
uh, uh, then you can get it as PT by uh, P. Say uh, you, you have uh, uh, what you call is price level at price index at time period T and your price level at price uh, price index at T minus N. So you have uh, uh, N years of gap, then you can calculate the uh, compound annual uh, growth rate of price index change uh, using the compound annual growth rate formula that is PT divided by uh, PT minus N to the power 1 by N minus 1 into 100. That's the standard things you do or you can uh, use uh, regression to uh, calculate your uh, 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 change in your price index and that gives you the uh, uh, inflation. Next what we will discuss is uh, uh, the other cons other uh, uh, broad areas of our uh, inflation that is uh, the inflation, how inflation in India is measured. In India, uh, there are uh, various uh, price indices used. As you can see from this graph, Uh, that we measure inflation using uh, CPI of industrial worker, which is denoted here IW. Uh, then uh, CPI e, 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 workers food inflations, uh, that is CPI of industrial workers for the food category, then you have agricultural labor. Uh, then we have what you call is CPI for rural, CPI for urban, and then CPI for rural and urban. So usually in case of India, we use CPI, that is your consumer price index, WPI, and your GDP deflator. In case of uh, 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 CPI, that is your consumer price index, we have further uh, measured uh, this inflation by CPI for industrial worker, CPI for agricultural labor, CPI for uh, rural India, CPI for urban India, and then we have combined uh, 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 this thing. We'll discuss uh, 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 them uh, one by one as we we'll go along. Before that, let's look at the uh, WPI and CPI for uh, uh, what you call it uh, for India for the last uh, eight to ten years. So you see. In most cases, your WPI. Ah, it's, yeah. Uh, in, in in most years, you see your WPI, that is your wholesale price index, is lower than that of your CPI.
So this wholesale price index, which uh, we are uh, denoting as WPI, that refers to the uh, price index of the average prices of all commodities produced and uh, uh, transacted in the economy at the first point. So in uh, uh, so in case of your WPI, this is at the first point of point of your bulk sale. in the uh, 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 domestic market and here uh, only the direct exports or imports uh, from and to the factories alone are included. So WPI include exports as well as imports but those exports and imports are to the factories directly are excluded from the excluded from the uh, uh, WPI uh, uh, measurement. Uh, it includes the price of uh, intermediate goods that is the raw material and semi finished goods as well as imported tangible goods. So it includes what you call is intermediate goods. As well as imported. Tangible goods that is the merchandise uh, and these uh, tangible goods are uh, if they are transacted at the first point of uh, sales then they are uh, uh, included. However, one major point is it excludes all services such as education, health, banking, transport and uh, communication. So uh, because it excludes the services, therefore the wholesale price is also known as the price that the producer of commodities get. The producers uh, of commodities get. Currently, uh, 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 when we are measuring this, uh, what you call is the uh, uh, WPI, the, the goods and services are Uh, the goods and services are uh, grouped into three broad categories. One is your primary articles, which is inclusive of your food articles, non-food articles, as well as mineral and uh, crude petroleum and natural gas. And the other is fuel and power. Uh, and the third category is manufacturing. So as you can see, this is a pro, uh, the WPI is referred as the price that the producers of commodities get. Uh, therefore, the manufacturing uh, products in the WPI calculations get a weight of 64.23. Uh, and amongst them, then that is divided equally across the uh, uh, each food, uh, each manufacturing product. Uh, and then then followed by the primary articles 
which gets a 22.62 uh, as the weights and then your uh, uh, weights. Uh, currently, in India, we have the uh, base year of uh, 2010, which we have uh, uh, in case of WPI. So this WPI therefore also uh, known as uh, uh, your producer price index. Then we have this consumer uh, price index that is CPI as I said earlier. A consumer price index refers to the uh, uh, refers to the index of the average retail price of goods and services contain the consumption basket of the relevant group of the consumer. So the relevant group of consumers uh, determines which type of CPI we are ca calculating. If our relevant group of consumers are in the urban area, then we are calculating CPIR. If they are industrial workers, we are cal calculating CPI of in industrial worker. If they are agricultural labor, uh, then we have agricultural labor and rural area. Why do you have these different type of CPIs? Uh, this is because the consumption basket of these different type of uh, 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 consumers are different. Uh, to illustrate this, the difference consumption basket, the classic example is in the rural and urban area. Say, in, if you are including uh, uh, house, consumption of house, that is your rent you are paying uh, in the rural area as in your consumption basket, then that does not make much of sense because in rural area, hardly any person, uh, uh, very rarely you will see uh, only a handful of people are in rented house. But if you are living out, say, a house rent in urban area, then uh, you are in serious trouble because in many parts, particularly you see Bangalore or in Porta or in Delhi, major chunk of the uh, uh, income of uh, vast majority in, in there uh, is spent on your rent. So as we see, uh, the consumption basket uh, uh, differ significantly uh, for different uh, areas. This uh, CPI, uh, uh, the WPI, uh, used to measure our uh, what you call is inflation. Uh, the uh, Labor Bureau Bureau of the Ministry of Labor uh, uh, published the data on CPI of industrial worker and CPI of agricultural uh, labor. Whereas uh, CSO, Central Statistical Organizations, uh, published the uh, uh, statistics uh, uh, for CPI of rural area, CPI of urban area, as well as your combined uh, uh, CPI. And uh, we have uh, uh, different types of commodities, consumptions in the uh, 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 CPIs also. And you can see different weightage given to the CP, uh, different components or the items of CPI. Uh, your food and beverage items gets the highest uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, weightage, whereas uh, your uh, pan tobacco and intoxicants receive the uh, 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 least amount of uh, 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 you see the list uh, weightage is given to pan tobacco and intoxicants. Since we have various uh, 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 since we have uh, various indices and they yield different rate of inflations, uh, then the natural question arises which index is most relevant for a particular purpose. The answer to this uh, uh, depends on various factors. Because the price of various items do not always change in the same directions. For example, uh, uh, when your <coughs> prices of AC and uh, say a refrigerator or TVs are increasing, at the same time prices of mobiles are declining. And similarly, the prices of computers has gone down. Similar, similarly, you have prices of some items like fruits, vegetable, they are very seasonal. So uh, uh, similarly, retail prices are more volatile than the wholesale price prices. And prices of commodities usually fluctuate uh, more than that of your uh, services. Uh, since these different indices represent different group of people or the geographical area cover different set of items. Though there is overlapping, use different weights, uh, uh, weighting system, uh, where, and also uh, use uh, uh, different formula, whether it is a last pair formula or the passes formula. Uh, Therefore, each one of them are useful and that depends upon for whom it is measured for. Uh, but it is It is important to note that neither CPI is a perfect measure of our cost of living, nor the WPI is a true measure of our inflation. This is because both CPI and w, WPI uh, are subject to mainly four uh, errors. Both CPI and WPI ignores the new products which are introduced in the economy in the current time period. Because for those new products, uh, they, uh, they, uh, there, are, there are no historical data available uh, for the prices of the new products. Therefore, you do not have a base year prices for the new products. And therefore, they are not included in the, uh, 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 what you call is the uh, measurement of our uh, CPI, either both CPI uh, uh, and WPI. Furthermore, 
both of them ignore the change in the product quality. See, particularly in your uh, electronics items in the recent years, if you offshore, the product quality has improved. Uh, at the same time, the prices has declined. So uh, uh, this WPI and CPI, uh, they do not capture that product quality. Uh, similarly, they, uh, this CPI and WPI are based on fixed weight for the corresponding base year, which uh, 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 may uh, undergo change over time. For instance, uh, 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 say WPI and CPI indices are based on uh, last pair measures, which does not allow any substitutions between goods when their relative prices changes. This is overestimating of the inflation rate. In contrast, GDP deflator is based on a passage measure, which also ignores your substitution, but at, as it uses the current uh, quantities, it underestimate the inflation. Similarly, both uh, 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 similarly, both CPI and WPI uh, uh, are based on uh, sample data rather than the whole all goods and uh, services. Only your GDP deflator takes into most of the goods and services produced in the country, but WPI, CPI are subject to uh, a sample basket of goods and uh, 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 goods and services. Therefore, they are subject subject to but you can uh, call it a measurement or uh, error because of sampling and non-sampling errors. Now, if you look at the difference between uh, uh, CPI and WPI, your WPI reflects change in average prices for bulk set of commodities at wholesale level, whereas uh, uh, your CPI reflects average change in prices at the retail level paid by the uh, consumer. Uh, uh, the weights of the items in your WPI are based on production values. Weights of items in CPI based on the average house, household uh, expenditures. Similarly, weight for food groups in the WPI uh, uh, is small compared to the CPI. WPI does not include services where CPI includes services like your education and so forth. Similarly, your WPI includes intermediate goods, whereas CPI does not include intermediate goods. So uh, your WPI in case of India is uh, is measured by the uh, Office of Economic Advisor, uh, Department for Promotion of Industry and International Trade, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, whereas CPI, Rural, Urban and All India are uh, measured by CSO, National Statistical uh, Office Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementations, uh, whereas CPI of industrial worker and CPI of uh, uh, agricultural labor is measured by a, a Ministry of Labor, that is the Labor Bureau.
So this is all about we have for inflation. Next, what we'll discuss is uh, 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 unemployment. Any questions about inflation? No, sir. Hmm. Go on, Davis. Sir, I was saying that we don't have any questions for inflation. Okay. So next what we'll discuss is unemployment. Uh, let us take a five minutes break, then we'll co I'll come back.
So, uh, 